Hi, Hi everybody. Guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Today's video is going to be a lot different than all of my other previous videos and I just want to say in advance that I am so sorry for not posting um, for a little bit. For those of you who do not know, on August 16th our lives changed forever. Um, our dad passed away. Um, yeah, really wanted to make this video and kind of say thank you for everything, for all the DMs for all the snapchats, all the text messages, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we apologize for not answering every single one of y'all, but, but just, just now that we read them and we appreciate yeah. all the prayers and all the love and the support, mm -hmm. y'all have really made this process easier knowing that there's a wave and army of people behind us. And for those of you that even asked about me and how I'm doing, I saw those as well. Thank you for that, thank you for caring. Deciding to do this video was, was kind of a tough one um, for yeah. us to do, yeah. but uh, I know that Jordan had posted if we were to do a video, would you have any questions for us? A ton of you guys answered and gave us a lot of good questions. I don't know, you just wanted to hear from us from in this hard time, so. Um, please don't cast judgment how we might be or any expectation that you might have. You're gonna probably in this video see us smile and see us laugh and when we talk about him, um, we celebrate Anthony's life. And yeah, pretty much a part of the grieving process. This is healing for us to talk about him. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do in this video today. Ask, uh, answer any questions that you asked. So the first question that was asked was, was this expected? And no, no, Heck, no, 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 it's not. July 20th, uh, Anthony got um, diagnosed with COVID. Mm -hmm. um, he was very healthy. It was the first day that he really started fighting it, um, going to the doctor and, and getting diagnosed with that and being treated. And he went through that 10 day process and still did not get better. As a result of not getting better, we went back to the doctor, they sent us to the hospital. Even after seven hours at a hospital, they sent him home and said that it's viral, it'll just have to run its course. It was 19 days in the hospital, 19 days of trusting and believing and waiting for him to come out. And at one point we were even told that he is coming out, yeah. um, that he's getting better. And then before we knew it, um, 19 days passed and we went from a Friday saying he's getting better to a Sunday morning saying he's not gonna make it to the end of the day. And then from that point, um, we lost him on that next Monday morning. It was a month battling COVID and uh, pneumonia. It was not expected when they took him on the stretcher, um, you know, by ambulance to the hospital. We had every intention that he was just going to get treatment and then come back out. We had a lot of people around us who were like getting sick of COVID, going into the hospital five days, come out, you know, and like we just thought it was just another, I don't know, situation like that. A lot of people asked, what was our reaction? You want to start and then we'll go down the line. You know, at the end, uh, we were, you know, by the grace of God, we were able to go in and, and Jordan and I were able to see him in person right at the end and he was not awake, but we believe that he heard us as we were talking with him. Cole was on the phone on his way driving home from Miami. That was the only moment that we had um, to, to say our goodbyes and he wasn't cognizant of that. A lot of doctors say the last thing to go is your hearing. Absolutely. So we, so we believe, we believe that, that he heard us. He heard us. Yeah. And when we heard, we actually got the phone call at uh, 447 is when he passed. And we got the phone call a little after 5 a.m. The phone rang in the middle of the night while we were sleeping. Um, and that was about the worst moment of our lives for sure. I was just laying there. And mom was like sleeping in her room like for the first time in a while right a, a month, month and maybe half, yeah. the hospital at the time was like calling her for like checkups and stuff i heard her like answer she started crying and i literally got up and ran to her room it was kind we of all a blur and you were like he he's gone like he's gone and then i just like broke down and i didn't even hug this woman like i did not even hug you like i was so in shock like Okay, I don't want to cry, but I was like so in shock and like, I don't know. Like, I was like, no. You were screaming no. I was no. screaming no. Like, yeah. Yeah. After tending to Jordan and just holding her, I knew that I had to go downstairs and tell Cole he was sleeping. I woke him to tell him. I didn't cry at first. God dang, y'all gonna have to cut this part. <laughs> no, off. it's okay. You didn't believe me. I didn't believe you. The day before I was in Miami and she called me. And you told me that he went me to the end of the day. And me being a dummy, my first response was, you're joking. 
like that was like how I processed it. Something that night told me like this is gonna be a short night and it was. I didn't talk the entire day or the entire next day. I just like sat in the same spot and just stared. He laid his head back and just stared at the ceiling. It was very different. Um, and I, you need to know that, that there's no one right way to grieve or yeah. to deal with anything like that. I would have thought Jordan would have been the one to, to go silent and Cole would have been the one vocal, but it was very different and, and that's okay. And we've been doing our best on a daily basis to try to give each other space to grieve the way that we need to, but, but then at the not, same time, not too much space for us to stay. And I'm still in like the the denial and shock part. We were in the hotel a few days ago, and I pulled out my phone to text him goodnight. I was somewhere the other day, and I did the same thing. Something really good happened, and I thought, oh, I gotta tell Anthony, and I realized that he wasn't there to tell. So, um. It's something that we are learning how to give each other space to grieve the way that we need to, but then at the same time, make sure we don't give each other too much space where we're all finding a corner to grieve in and none of us are connecting and none of us know that we're not alone. Um, and you're only alone if you choose to be alone. We're not choosing to be. Yeah. Somebody asked, has it affected your bond with your family? Um, I'm going to say, yeah. Yeah. Like, but in a in positive crazy way. Ways, yeah. um, uh. We really all came together. Something that I expected us to do, but not in such like a tremendous way. I didn't think it would take something like this. Yeah. Well, it's made us realize that we're really not promised tomorrow. It's made us realize, you know, there's an expression, you don't know what you got until it's gone. Yeah. That sometimes we forget, we forget how much we love each other and how much um, we know it, but maybe we don't say it, maybe we don't show it, and this has definitely been one of those wake-up calls where eyes are opened and our hearts are, they're grieving, but they're also realizing how much we had. And we have dreams and hopes and expectations for the future, and we know that, um, that the only thing that we can do is honor Him by living, not by sitting in a corner. Being that we all cope differently and grieve differently, yeah. um, what stages have surprised you the most? I like surprised myself in the situation. Like, I look all smiley and like happy and like all that on social media and stuff, and everybody's telling me like you don't have to smile, you don't have to fake being happy. This has been really hard. Like act like it, you know. Like I, I seem to find the good in freaking everything and it sucks sometimes but it's good in other places <laughs> but it's like this is so hard i honestly thought that i would be a pile on the floor like not being able to move like i'm, I'm finding comfort knowing that he's not hurting anymore and he's where he's always wanted to be like my dad used to <laughs> cry like a freaking baby about the thought of heaven and like like he's always said that he wants to go like so bad jesus is the way and i've stood on that so much in this situation. You've been amazing in your faith. Um, Jordan's faith has been so unshakable. It really knocked me on my back. An entire day after I hated God, if we're being completely honest, I was just pissed. I thought about just leaving. It would be a whole lot easier if I could just go see him ASAP. It changed the night as I stopped being silent. I was just sitting in the living room and I just started crying and I started praying. I just missed my best friend. But like Jordan said now, like I know where he is and I kind of hurry up and see him. Like I, I can't mess around in worldly things and miss him. There are days or chunks of days where <laughs> you're happy you're you're going on and and you're just kind of enjoying each other and sometimes can be confusing because it's like wait it honestly makes us feel like we're not supposed to be we're happy not supposed right to now. be happy right now like, and we're not yeah. supposed to be laughing we're not supposed to be having fun it makes you feel guilty so i made it a, a, a point to make sure that this family did not do that we're gonna 
stay open and we're going to stay communicating with each other and we are not going to feel guilty for being happy in moments because the fact is is that people that are seeing us laugh and enjoy life in this moment they weren't there 10 hours ago when we were all bawling on the floor because we were having a bad moment in that time the grieving process will go for the rest of our lives there will be a, a moment where jordan is going to get walked down the aisle by somebody other than her dad and that is a very important time in your life at, for a girl. I, I remember the day that I realized that my dad won't be walking me down the aisle and it was excruciating. But don't feel guilty for being happy one moment because there are going to be enough sad moments. The fact is, is that Anthony is in a, an, an amazing place. He's in heaven. He's enjoying where he's at. We're the ones hurting. So we've got to honor him by living life. The reason that I'm like back, me and Cole are like back on social media so quickly. A lot of people don't know this about my dad, but my dad <laughs> literally like got up every single morning and checked our social every single platform <laughs> to see, oh, if our video videos did well. Like the reason we're, we're back so quickly is because first of all, you guys support us a lot in anything we're going through and you guys have really showed yourselves with that. So I cannot thank you enough. Thank mm -hmm. you so much to like, he would want us to get back to work. He wants us to do what makes us happy, and he's seen that this makes us literally so happy. And it made him happy. Yeah, it literally <laughs> made everybody like around us happy. And that's the reason we're back, and we just want to do everything for him. And in his honor. And in his honor. This is our new normal. What we do with that new normal is we honor him every day by living, by loving each other, and by living ready, as Cole just said a moment ago, because we're not promised tomorrow either. There are so many things that we all four as a family used to talk about doing and starting and and, and ventures that we would talk about we doing. We just sat on them. We and just, they just let them, we just always, let them rot. We always yeah. say we'll, we'll plan it later or push it to tomorrow. Yeah. But we had no freaking idea like what was going to happen. So we all sat down it's and decided that since we've all talked about things with daddy, since daddy's not here to continue him with us, Let's go forward. Let's do it in his honor. And listen, can I just say this? If you got somebody in your life that you're holding a grudge to, that you love and haven't told in a long time. Bro, let it go. I hold grudges against people I went to kindergarten with. Honestly, if you ever done me wrong and if you're watching this video, I forgive you. Yeah. And if there's people and if there's people in your life that you love but you haven't told them in a long time Tell or them. they don't know they don't know how much you value and appreciate them, Tell them. pick up the phone, call them, go Say hang out so. with them. Listen, don't let the little things get in the way of enjoying the people that you care about. Yeah, I think we all did that. We really honestly took for granted, like, because we thought that freaking he's Superman. Like, nothing was going to happen to this man. Like, you're at college, you're like, I don't even know. You freaking spit him out at a friend's house. Text your freaking parents. You love them. Tell them goodnight. Because when I was in Vegas, I never talked to my parents. That was, like, the worst part of my life because I did not, like, have them. Even in Miami, like, when I moved, like, he was in the hospital and stuff. And, like, he was hurting and, like... I texted him and stuff, but like, there'd be days where he wasn't in the hospital and he was completely fine and I didn't like text him, hey, or good morning, or I love you, or anything, so. If you have somebody in your life, freaking tell them that you love them. I was, like, Garrison, like, his dad called him or whatever, and he, and he declined it, and I was like, call your dad back right now. <laughs> like, I literally was like, answer your phone. So, but I just want everybody to know that, like, don't take what you have for granted. When it's somebody that's gone and you never get back, you just recognize how much more you could have done. And I, I hope that we will all have an opportunity to take the bad that has happened and make some really good out of it. So if you're watching this, take this as your sign that um, you need to pick up the phone or you need to stop declining calls to the people that you love. So so today we all got tattoos in remembrance <laughs> of our dad. I was the only one that didn't have one though. Yeah, so I already <laughs> had a tattoo. This man is standing I've never, up, I've never obviously. had tattoos before. And me and Anthony said we would never, ever, ever get one. But. Unless. And if we did get one, it would be something that we would do together. So this is what we did today. Yeah.
journey. Wait, wait, little, wait, I don't even know where mine is there. <laughs> um, so I got 447 because that is the time that my dad went to be with the Lord. I got love you bad because that's something he would always say to me. I got love you bad, but I brought um, some of his cards that he wrote and they wrote it in his exact handwriting. So that every time I look down, I can see him saying I love you bad to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so another thing huge that is yeah, like huge, huge, like <laughs> massive that I'm very excited. He would be very excited about. Yeah, he's yeah, going he to be. He's yeah, he'd yeah. be super proud of. Um, so my manager um, was talking about like me doing some type of merch. I honestly really wanted something deeper than merch. I honestly, really wanted to do something special. I am starting my own boutique. Um, so I'm going to be starting an online boutique here very, very soon. So the plan to launch is like late September and like by October. So get excited about that. But all of it is for um, my daddy. So so it's in his honor. And yeah. it's called 224 Clothing. Yeah, it's called 224 Clothing, guys. I'm just going to have a little girly section, a little be bad section. Then I'm going to have a little boy section for you guys. Different lines. Um, and yeah. guys, we're not forgetting about you either we we knew that we needed to kind of get away a little bit and we decided to go out to Dallas mm -hmm. and to go out and uh, do some shopping for yeah. the boutique items and little so gummy bears, gummy bears. get excited because this thing's gonna go crazy and yeah. <laughs> I love you guys and all of you guys are gonna love it hopefully and I'm working as hard as I can for you and my dad will be super super excited yeah. super proud that so was, that was one of your dreams and then Cole you have yeah. you had some dreams as well also starting my own clothing and it will be live ready because that's exactly what my dad did on a daily basis pretty much the background is we're not promised tomorrow so whatever you want to do do it now. We're going to start a, a channel, a podcast. Um, I think we're going to use some of the things that we've walked through to be able to help you. So it's something that I've always had on my heart as well. And yeah. uh, to start kind of like a Mommy Beckham uh, channel where, much, yeah. where we're um, available to yeah. talk about real issues and the things that we struggle with and how to not get stuck in life. So you want to know why we have a smile on our face? Because we know that what he would want is for us to move forward with him in our hearts but that's what keeps us close and that's what keeps us talking about him and that's what keeps us reminding ourselves that all of the memories they can never be taken away from us and he was the most amazing person on the planet and yeah. so we have a that's lot true. of stories there's been over 2,000 uh, views of his celebration service and if you didn't get a chance to see it we'll put I it i can put the link down in the description if you guys want to go see it if you're wondering why we call it a celebration service because it wasn't a funeral what we decided to do and what anthony always wanted it was for us to celebrate his life he loved very very well and um he was an amazing friend to everybody that met him and yeah. knew him he's with us and god is with us that was his source of strength and he taught us that and we're getting mm -hmm. through because of god because of the strength that he gives us the bible says that we can do all things through christ who strengthens us everything that anthony taught us he was an amazing man of god he was an amazing father an amazing mm -hmm. husband and he taught us how to have faith um to move forward and that's exactly what we're doing love y'all and we really really yeah, appreciate y'all really well, we literally can't say that enough if you guys have any topics or anything that you would like to see like us three talk about please like dm us like let us know comment on this video because we honestly really want to use this to help you guys as well because this situation like has really taught me like there's so many people out there who's gone through the same exact thing and you don't know it until somebody comes out and talks about it. So mm -hmm. we kind of want to be like the first people to like, you know, talk about this. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, this tragedy, like it should be like in a safe, like nobody should talk about it. I think that it's life and like things happen and honestly, like everybody deals with it different, but we want to be the type of people that like that help you through it because we're honestly going through the exact same things but we love, um, we we love you so. my dad loved you guys he loved filming <laughs> with you guys and like having yeah. all of you guys do the sweet little funny comments um yeah, yeah. he honestly he read loved, everyone he, lo he loved the empire um that we built all together so yeah and yeah. we look forward to what's yeah. ahead with all right thank you guys for watching we'll see you guys soon and thank you for all the support love you all love guys. you guys